<laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, we're gonna just quickly pick this up. Hi, I'm Lavi and this is Oli. We are attempting a new Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by motorcycle. After riding 3,000 miles across Europe, we are now ready to explore the roads of North Africa. Click the subscribe button to follow our journey around the world and let the adventure begin! Good morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 75 on our around the world trip. We're here outside a cafe somewhere down the coast. We're about two hours from the border of Mauritania and we can see the ocean just over there. We've got Bumblebee just behind us and we set up our tent last night just in the corner behind this wall to protect us from the wind. It was very, very windy. It was windy and sandy night. <laughs> yes, <laughs> our tent was full with sand. <laughs> it was a lot of traffic going on here as well because this is pretty much the only stop for trucks where they can rest and visit the cafe. So there was a lot, a lot of activity going on in the night. But it's really cute because uh, the guys here from the cafe, they gave us yesterday night some cookies and also this morning they came out and they gave us some milk and some water and it's so nice you know we feel really welcome here and, and thank you so much guys it's amazing yeah and also a trucker the coming from Mali uh, also brought us a mango <laughs> yes and was just like here's a mango for you guys look mango the Mali so he actually brought this mango from Mali and now we get to eat it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you guys where we're heading today. So we are really, really, really down here at the bottom of Morocco. And we are going to be continuing our way, as always, down the N1, heading south. But today, crossing the border into Mauritania to reach the city of Nouadhibou. So the day is finally here after more than five weeks here in Morocco. Our Moroccan adventure is coming to an end and our Mauritanian adventure is just about to begin. So I'm super excited to cross over the border and check out a whole new country. It's amazing. But super sad at the same time as well because we felt really welcome here in Morocco and we loved it so much. I really had no idea how amazing this country is. Yeah, it's been absolutely unbelievable to explore this country and I feel like we really got around a lot of different regions and saw a lot of different landscapes. It's just, yeah, it's been incredible. Please, please, please guys, before you continue watching, hit the subscribe button because we really need more subscribers <laughs> <laughs> just like that just that so we have about a hundred miles to the border to Mauritania and then another 40 miles to Nouadhibou but we haven't checked out where we're gonna sleep tonight so this is something we have to figure out on the way um, it's already nine o'clock so better hit the road let's go all right last day in Morocco is it time to hit the road? <laughs> no, we have to go back. <laughs> Do everything again. Oy. Bye bye guys. Oh yes, found the tarmac. Yeah, those guys were super nice at the cafe. I mean, when we arrived and they gave us a tea, uh, well, we asked them for a tea, and then when we wanted to pay them for the tea, they were like, no, 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 the tea's for you. We were like, well, is this how, like, how could you guys make any money? But I mean, it's very nice, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> it's a beautiful day today. It's just 23 degrees. Yeah, and one of the clearest days that we've had so far. I mean, I can actually see blue sky. It's, uh, it's very rare. We've had it mostly very incredibly dusty and gray for such a long time. Yeah. So just look at this endless blue up here. Wow. Yeah, wow. Cool. 
Yeah, what a crazy cafe sitting there in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Yeah. 100 miles from the border, more than 100 miles from Dakhla. That's a, that's a crazy place to be. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> a unique place. Yeah. But yeah, I guess because uh, a lot of people taking this route here, they have always nice company, always people passing by, saying hello, they meet interesting people, so I think they are never really bored. <laughs> no, no, they, they're not alone out here, they're not no. alone. But even this morning we've seen like 10 people coming and going, yeah. you know, lots of salam alaikum, salam, salam, and they're coming from all over the place, going on all different ways into Africa or up into Morocco uh, it's really really cool so yeah let's see how the next border how it's going if it will be easy or difficult we have no idea <laughs> yeah every border crossing is unique and special in its own way yes and uh, you're always at the mercy of whatever needs to be done needs to be done yeah but it doesn't matter how many border crossings you do it's always the feeling like ah oh, let's hope everything goes well <laughs> yeah exactly you always hope that it's going to be smooth and easy so yeah. we'll see how it goes most of the time it is smooth, smooth and easy <laughs> yeah i mean it's only 9 30 now it's only about an hour and a half until we'll actually reach the border so we'll be early enough that we'll be able to sort out everything we need to sort out and hopefully we'll make our way into New Adibu where we can take a few days of rest after countless miles on the road over the past week so it'll be good to take a couple of days off in New Adibu, rest and uh, get to experience a brand new country and catch up with some editing! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that! <laughs> so I've got the cruise control set to 60 miles an hour a nice easy speed so uh, yeah let's cruise our way down to Mauritania last group of Moroccan camels for us <laughs> camel party <laughs> there they are oh, look and there's one right next to the road hello wow never gets old hey <laughs> nice very cool bye guys have a nice day yeah, I do wonder how their owners ever find them, to be honest. No I mean, idea. I mean, they, they could literally go anywhere they wanted. Yeah. I guess they just have to decide, oh yeah, I would like my camels now, and then they just have to drive for like two days to look around for them. Yeah, so if you know how they find their they camels, please, please let us know. <laughs> <laughs> We've reached a small cluster of houses in the desert called Bir Ganduz and um, there's a petrol station here which is good because we have only about 57 miles left in the tank oh I think it's a police control here ah yes it is okay should we stop filming yeah we're just stopping for a last refuel for the bike and for us before we head over to the border it's uh something like around 50 miles from here so we're basically gonna do a straight shot from here to the border and um cross over <laughs> getting exciting now so we're just leaving this little town here in the middle of nowhere <laughs> we talked to one guy and he said like pretty much no one is living here just a really few people everyone else is just here um, for work staying here for like one or two months and then they're leaving back where they where they normally live and then yeah I think these are pretty much the last buildings coming up and then back out into the nothingness 
crazy place. The bread we bought, the circular bread called Hobbs, uh, cost one dirham. So that's like 10 cents for the bread. So it's uh, not a very expensive place. It was pretty good price. We filled up some petrol and now we have about 70 dirham left. So in the next town we will try to spend our last dirham. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more town coming up called Gurgurat. Uh, and that's pretty much the last place where we can spend that money. So we'll, I guess we'll just see what we can find over there. Oh, look at the sand dune just over there. Wow. They look impressive. Oh, look massive. How big. Ooh. And a totally different color to the dunes that we saw in Merzuga, which were like a dark orange. And these dunes are like very, very light colored. <laughs> They're installing here on the side of the road new uh, electricity lines and some camels in the background as well. <laughs> nice. Got a bit of sand on the road as well. Have to be careful of that. Oh yeah, you can see here that the sand is covering quite a large portion of the road. Attention, attention. Still enough of a gap at the moment for me to get through. <laughs> yes. You can just about see in the background where the massive dunes start and probably stretch on for hundreds of miles after that. So the place Gurgurat, I thought it would be something but it turned out to just be a military base just here. Uh, but we looked on the map and there is one more place to spend our money which is a petrol station just before the border. So we're going to head to that petrol station, see if there's anything to buy otherwise we'll just put some more fuel in the bike and then we'll be on our way to the border. Yeah, and also I saw an old sign on the side of the road saying Danger Mines. I'm not sure if that's still relevant, but I definitely heard uh, back in the past when people were traveling this road that there is a big danger of landmines if you come off of the road and head into the desert in either direction. But whether or not that's still the case uh, today, I don't know. I haven't seen, I've just seen one old sign that said Danger Mines. I haven't seen any other sign warning us of that. I can see the petrol station emerging from the desert up ahead and then I think the borders are just a couple of miles after that. Oh yeah, this is where we need to be. Then we can decide to buy something there and fill the rest up with fuel. Parfait! Okay, we've managed to spend every last dirham that we had. We bought some bread, we bought some eggs, we bought some Red Bull, we filled up a little bit more fuel, 
and uh, now we have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I don't know if we can actually just bypass all the trucks. I don't know. I can see the border right there. Yes. I don't think it's very far away, but uh, well, that was a long, it was a long drive from the <laughs> petrol station, wasn't it? No, I didn't realize that. Well, should we put the parasol up? I think so. Yeah, maybe it's yeah. Let's put the parasol up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, one trucker just walked up to us and told us uh, that the the line is just for trucks, just for camion. He said. He said uh, we can just go straight up to the border. So we'll just ride straight to the border, I guess. Okay. Oh, all the trucks, they have to wait. <laughs> Temperature at the moment, the bike is recording 34 degrees. So it's uh, it's pretty hot at the moment and we're not moving very fast. Okay, this might be the point for us to turn off the cameras. Yep. Like this one. Yeah? And there. Okay, stop. Okay, so we've just gotten outside of the Moroccan side of the border. Uh, but I'll tell you more about the process in a minute because we're just crossing no man's land at the moment. This is a small area of land between Morocco and Mauritania, which is neither Morocco or Mauritania because we've actually been stamped out. Yeah, but it was quite emotional to say goodbye to Morocco now because we spent so so many days here and um, there was kind of a connection, you know, between the Moroccans and us and it was like, you know, it was really nice. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. felt really welcome here and... Absolutely, they were nice from the beginning to the end, right? Yes, Even amazing. the customs guys laughing and it was not like uh, tense or anything. They were really nice, really yeah, nice. Yeah, really nice, really cool people. If you were to camp like here, you would be uh, neither in Morocco or Mauritania. You would just be there <laughs> on your own. Crazy, no? Yeah, it's quite cool. That is quite cool. Yeah. Okay, it looks like this might be coming up to the border. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the camera again and then we'll see how we get on. Oh, sorry, 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 my I didn't see anything about that. I didn't see anything about that, sorry. <laughs> okay, we're gonna just quickly pick this up. Okay, we're in Mauritania. Okay. Yay. I'm not sure if the audio was working before, but we are here. We have just entered Mauritania. Whee! We are inside Mauritania. We passed by all the controls, passed by everything, and we are here on our way to Nuadibu. And it feels amazing to have got past that process because that was a bit of a crazy process on the Mauritanian side, oh my god. It was hectic. I'm gonna go through the details of everything we did on the Moroccan side and then on the Mauritanian side, but first we're just gonna drive to Nuadibu, we're gonna get over there, we're gonna get to an accommodation, we're gonna unpack our stuff, relax, and then we can go through the whole process and explain everything. I just didn't expect the road to become that bad that quickly. We just exited Morocco, no man's land. Instantly it was oh, gravel and sand and it was so, so bad. Yeah, they sort of looked at us like, and you're gonna go into all the way through Mauritania like this, you know, like, yeah, sure, you'll go all the way through Mauritania. You fell in the first hundred meters. Oh my God, crazy stuff. I mean, as soon as we passed, through the Mauritanian border control and hit the main road. It was just a bank of sand covering the whole road instantly. That was the first thing that we started with. I mean, what a way to start the country, hey? 
anyway we'll drive now to Nuadibu to our accommodation and then we'll explain the whole process after and it's awesome because just next to us here is the famous Mauritanian railway that takes the iron ore from inland Mauritania to the coast at Nuadibu and that is just next to us here and if we see one of those trains that'd be awesome but this is oh hold on I'm going to turn this off there's a guy but look we can see the coast so Nuadibu sits out on a spit so this is the inside and the outside coast to the Atlantic is just over there but um, yeah that checkpoint this time they asked us not for the passport but for a paper copy of the passport so luckily I had already made like 10 copies of each of our passports in the back but it really surprised me that he wanted that that's the first time from all the checkpoints we had in Morocco this is the first time we actually had to give them the piece of paper to keep so but this might uh, I think there's another one okay all right okay so another checkpoint in as many minutes and uh, we had to give again a paper copy of the passport to him and then they were really insistent on knowing exactly where we were staying tonight so we told them Villa Maguela is the accommodation that we haven't booked but we're going to go over there and see if they have a room for us Good evening guys, we arrived happy and alive at our place here in Nuadibu. <laughs> yeah, come and have a look at this amazing view. So this was our room, and we head outside. Oh, got them doggies here. Hello, what's this? What's that? What's this, what's that? Look at this view. If you look down there, Those dark streaks in the water, this is loads of little fish, little baby fish. It's like a fish nursery here. Okay, we'll go back to the room. That's really nice to just be in a room without the wind for the first time in many days. Yeah, this place here, Villa Maguela, is super, super nice. I'm so glad that we found this place. 15 euros a night as well, so really not a bad price. So I think we're definitely going to chill out here for quite a few <laughs> many days and yes. have a relaxation mm -hmm. after about a thousand miles of windy, sandy coastline and then a border crossing, mm -hmm. which we have to talk about now. What we had to do and all the stages of the border crossing of course, the first step was to exit Morocco. At first they stamped our passports out. Then we continued with the bike a little bit further and then we had to give them the temporary import permit that we had got in Tangier on the way in. Admission temporaire. So that they could double check that that was all fine and we were within that time and everything was good with that we gave them the vehicle documents the v5c the ownership document and they went off and did some stuff and came back and that was all fine we had a dog sniffing the bike um we didn't even have to show anything in the bike um, no it was all good yeah all good. they were just like goodbye goodbye guys yeah and exactly we are like oh goodbye morocco they stamped the temporary import permit and then we basically had to continue and then give that stamp temporary import permit to the last person the, which was the gendarmerie the police and they verified everything and then we were out in no man's land mm -hmm. so that was quite easy didn't take more than about half an hour yeah yeah it was quite easy and then of course we fell over in no man's land <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry 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 I got helped up by the Moroccan military <laughs> but that's a, that's a different thing but then on the Mauritanian side things went a little bit crazy. We arrived there and were immediately swamped by tons of people around us who were basically saying, give me your passport, give me your passport, passports please. 
but none of them were wearing any official uniform. They were all just random people, and there was loads of them. And they were, mm -hmm. where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Give me the passports. We do this. We do that. And we knew that it was like, okay, we can't give our passports to these guys because mm -hmm. this is like not the official process. But it turns out these guys were all fixers and they were just basically trying to get us to give them the passports so that they could kind of do all the process for us and when we give them some money at the end. But we didn't really feel like we needed fixers. We felt like we could handle this process by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So then we had to work out what to do and it went in four stages. So stage one, we took our passports to the first little office on the left, logged us in on the information. So that part was fine and easy and they just wanted to verify the passports. At the second step, you get your visa. So you have to go in a little office, they take your fingerprints and then you pay them 55 euro and you get your visa, which is a quite funny visa, I show you. So you end up with, with the visa looking like that. So you get like a whole sticker. I think that's quite cool. But in between, they said they had some network issues. So this was already about... Maybe one hour in, yeah. One hour, one hour and a half in, yes. just to get those two visas. Um, but we got them, so that was mm -hmm. all good. Mm -hmm. Then stage three is customs, where we had to get the passivant or the temporary import permit for the bike, which is this document. Submission pour autorisation du circulaire du véhicule étranger. So I don't know the translation, but it's basically a 10 day allowance for the bike to be in Mauritania. That was 10 euro, um, so that was not very expensive at all. So that was perfectly fine. And then finally, when you got your visa, you che they checked your passports, you've got this document, we can drive to the final point, which again, just like the Moroccan side, is the gendarmerie. The police station where you have to show again your passport and as well the... The V5C, the original vehicle document. Exactly, and then they ask you as well where you're going and where you're gonna stay your first night. So I had to give this information to them and then they were happy with it actually. Said, okay, that's fine, and off you go. Bon voyage! <laughs> and in front of you is just sand. For the first 50 meters is just sand. Mm -hmm. There's no road at all. So we almost fell off again, mm -hmm. just trying to get out of there. But yeah, it was a really, really hectic border crossing. It was hot. We had our full gear on the whole time. We were walking around. Everyone tried to talk to us and to get some money out of us, and it's like, it was just really, really hectic and I was super happy when they actually said, okay, bon voyage, guy, <laughs> and cheers. The border guards were really, really friendly and really cool. I, wa I was really enjoying to talk to them, so that was nice. Yeah, and they even uh, wrote Mauritania on our box. Mauritania. So the whole process took about three, three and a half hours and we are super, super happy to have arrived here where we can chill out and just relax a little bit, make a plan as well, what we want to see, where we want to go further on. And yeah, it's really nice. I'm really happy. <laughs> me too, me too. Yeah, and anyway, that's it from us today. So we hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family. We will see you next time.